All right, this one's gonna take a little bit longer, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the configuration. We're gonna do two groups for crush groups for vocals and band. We're gonna do eight stereo auxes for mixes, for monitor mixes, two matrices for broadcast and front fills, and left, right, plus mono. So I think, I think that's what me only going to do three effects. I don't, I'm not a big fan of having like a four different reverbs, two different echoes. I think we'll do that. I'm gonna assume a GX4816 is connected plus a DX012 to extend our output count a little bit. I think from here we can start building out our fader space. Uh, easiest place to do that is in the I.O. screen, because uh, that way you can just tab uh, every other and through, through the, all the inputs. So again, I'm going to try to just cram as much stuff in here as possible, so I'm not going to do kick in, kick out kind of stuff. Let's see what else I can think of. We can do the click here, and then any, I'll do stereo sources on uh, two, two channels, so like that on odd even pairs. And then I'll link them a bit later. I'm not quite considering, you know, fader space really. Uh, I do want my DCAs to you know, mostly fit within 12 channels. I'm going to assume I'm using the Advantage Solo, so I want I have to keep things kind of tight. So let's see what else I can do here. Oh, I just labeled that. Go back through. G1. Cool. And from there, maybe we have acoustic guitars. And then, let's see, make sure I got all that other stuff good. Yep, 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 yep. We can maybe do, say we can have two channels for tracks. some horns. So horn one, horn two, horn three, horn four, and then we do some vocals. So let's just do, say we do six vocals. Cool, cool. And what else can we cram in here? Uh, that's vocals. Let's say we have four MC mics. Then we have two MD mics, maybe. And I, I don't know of anything else I can put. I could put Amius mics stage side, but I think I think that's good. Let me just double check everything. Drums, click. Two channels for aux, percussion, and bass sub synth. Two channels each for two keys, two guitars, two acoustics, some tracks. Four horns, six vocals, four MCs, two MDs. I think we're good. From here, I'm just gonna gray out anything I'm not using. And then we'll go to our locals. Uh, that'll be ambience right there. And then we'll gray these out, not using those. Talk back. I'll say one line in for any video material and then another line in a playback for USB stick. Cool. Let's assign these input stereos while we are thinking about it. So we're just going to basically look where I already had them. There's 9, 10, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then 23, 24, 25, 26. And then I think the last ones are going to be those ambience mics, 4950. And the line ins are already stereo. Wonderful. Let's set up our main mixes. And so to do that, we're going to kind of need to pull them in the fader space. So I'm not quite looking for strip assignments quite yet. I'm just getting uh, everything in the fader space here. So we have our left, right, our mono, and then our two stereo matrices. I'm just going to relabel these while I'm here, while I think about it. So left, right. Let's 
subs. Front fills. And forecast. And since these are all kind of basically my main mixes, I'm just going to make them all yellow. While we're here, uh, you can't gang mixes and mains together, but you can gang uh, subs and the main together. So, I'm going to gang gang. Left, right, and subs are ganging together. I'm going to pull broadcast off for now. I mean, left, right. So, main and sub will follow each other, but the front fills won't. So, how I would do this in my mind is I would just have my fingers on, two fingers on both the mains fader and the front fills fader whenever I need to turn the master volume up or down. All right, and that's our main bank done. We can lock if we need to. Uh, I'm gonna leave the lock off for now. And let's go back through our IO and color things up again. Like I said, I'm gonna pretend I'm using the uh, Vanta Solo, so I'm going to really rely heavily on DCA Spillover, so I'm gonna go ahead and get everything colored up now. Anything on tip utility, I'm gonna just make white. Band can stay green. Tracks will be purple. Orange or yellow, like always. Vocals are red. MC will be cyan. MD, again, it's utility. I'm just going to make white. I think I'm not using will be grayed out for now. Ambience is utility. Not needing any of those. Talk tracks utility. And then aux inputs are green. Alright, that's good. Now I can build some fader space. So this top layer is going to be just my DCAs and my DCAs sub mixes and my main mixes. So we'll first go to the DCAs and we will color these in a bit later and get these aside a bit later. And so I think I'm going to need six DCAs, seven DCAs. And then my subgroups, which again I'll get those assigned later on. B, this is going to be for our bulk of our percussion here. And then I think I think that's good. I'm going to make a little bit of separation between these things. Yeah, that looks all right. Something for our band layer. looks good and I think I'm going to squeeze in those tracks as well. Sick. It's going to be these horns and also the vocals. Make a little bit of room. Alright. And then I think we might be able to squeeze everybody else in on this bottom layer. Got ambience, talk back, and then our two aux channels. And in fact, it looks like we have a little bit of space, so we'll make a little bit of space. Wonderful. And this last layer we will use for our few few effects, effects returns we have and then our auxes and so while I'm here I'm going to just recolor these as well and also get rid of that reverb name because they're not going to stay reverbs and then these guys I'm just going to gray out because we're not using them done with that Back to our fader space here. We will get our eight boxes for monitoring. 
we color these first. So these are the sins, the bus, bus sins for the effects. I'm going to recolor these as well just so they match. We don't actually need the sins in our fader space, but we will put the effects returns in our fader space. So that is our fader space done. Again, DCAs are crust groups for drums and vocals, our actual main mixes. And then we have drums plus the click track, band plus the tracks, horns, vocals, our MCs, our MD mics, MVs mics, talkbacks mics, and our line ins. And from there we have our auxes and our effects returns, and I think I need to put also our broadcast mix here as well. All right, let's go back and get those DCAs assigned. So again, these are gonna be, let's say, drums first, and then we will put the band here, tracks here, brass here, vocals, auxes, and our MCs. Now let's get everybody assigned, and again, we just get to paint by numbers. So drums, band, tracks, horns, vocals, auxes, and our MCs. Now I'm not going to be doing an effects DCA, I'm just going to put the effects sends on a mute group. And while we're here, we can also assign our stereo groups. So these are going to be crush buses, so I'm not going to be turning channels off into the front of the house. They're going to be in addition to the actual you know, main channel faders. And while we're here, I guess we can go ahead and load up a compressor for it. and assign them to the main mix. And let's color everybody up and label. We can also assign our matrix and our broadcast mix as well while we're here. So with matrices on an Avantis, you know, you actually get control over all the channels plus your mixes. So for front fills, I'm going to not give them a full representation of the front of house mix. I'm going to bias them a little bit by putting only 10 per minus 10 of the main mix, and I'm going to put the vocals in at 10 minus 10 as well. That way, the vocals are naturally being sent a little bit hotter into the front fills. Because anyone at the front of the stage is going to be able to hear the band off the stage volume just fine. So I'm going to bias it pretty heavily towards the vocals so that people at the front of the stage can hear the vocals really well. And then similarly for the broadcast mix, I'll do a very similar thing and it's already set at pre which is good. That way if I turn down front of house it doesn't necessarily turn down broadcast. I'm going to put the subs in it a little bit, and then I'm going to go to our ambience mics and set these as pre-fader, so that way they just stick at a certain volume, and I'm going to say maybe just a little bit under halfway between that and the main mix. In contrast, if these were auxes, I'd have to send every channel into it individually. Whereas with this, I can just pull up the main mix and then add channels as I need. While we're here, let's also talk about the main pan. Our stereo effects, of course, we want to follow the main pan. And also our two matrices need to follow the main pan levels as well. While we're here, let's make sure that all of these buses are pre-fader. Next up, we have a little bit of tedious work to do. We need to assign all of our soft keys. And again, since I'm assuming 
we are going to be on the Avantis Solo. It's going to be a little bit of a process because I'm going to have to assign so many things. So first thing is I have to assign all of the mixes for the buses for the monitors. So you can think of this kind of like how an SQ works by default. It has all of the uh, buttons for the mixes on the side just assigned. This is the same deal, it's just I have to assign it manually. And so with those assigned, we can jump to any of those monitor mixes just by pressing the corresponding button. Next up, we're gonna assign the DCAs to our other side of the buttons here. And now with that done, no matter where we are on the console, particularly this home page, we're able to jump to any of our DCA spillovers just by pressing the corresponding button. I'm going to skip ahead to soft keys 17 and 18 that are mute groups 1 and 2. I'm going to go to assign those now. Mute group 1 is going to be the full band. And then mute group two is just going to be the effects sins. So now the entire band is muted and also the effects sins are muted. They are not currently in the fader space, but they are being turned on and off. Lastly, we have soft key six to assign. Let's do the tap tempo global. Over to surface premises now, we're just going to assign these to be the synth levels for our three effect sends. So that's going to be effect send one, effect send two, and effect send three. And just for redundancy, I'm going to make the custom rotaries do the exact same thing. Now if we navigate to a channel strip, see send level for stereo effects 1, 2, and 3, and also on rotaries, send levels for stereo effects 1, 2, and 3. Let's check our I.O. routing now. By default, all your input channels should be coming from S-Link in just a linear order. I'm just going to unassign anything that we are not currently using, just to be sure it's out of our sight. our channels from the S-Link. Let's check the local inputs. I'll assign this stereo pair here and then the talkback mic immediately after. And get rid of AES because we don't need to look at that. I'm not using that and then play back from the USB. That's our input routing. Let's check our output routing. The only local outputs that we need are going to be the, the broadcast matrix. So let's click those on, look at that's one and two. At the S-Link, we're just gonna sign our buses straight across the 16 uh, front panel inputs, outputs of the GX4816. And then the DX012, if it's on the DX1 port of the GX4816, is gonna show up on, starting on 65, through 80. So we'll go to 65, and that will be our left, right, our subs, and our front fills on 65 through 69, it looks like. Wonderful. Our MEs, our direct outs. We don't have room to give every single thing because we need to put our talkback mic and our ambience mics through there as well. 
So let's just get rid of these MC mics. That gives us our vocal line entirety, our horn line, everybody entirely. We're going to need our two MD mics. And then our ambience mics. And so we're missing one single channel, one single channel for that talkback mic to go through. Let's just see where we might can find something that doesn't necessarily need to go through the MEs. Let's just say we get rid of one overhead. So overhead right. Not going to worry about that overhead right. We're just going to put the talkback mic there. So that is seven. Done so. Let's take a look at our effects and inserts. First one is going to be a reverb. I want to make it a plate, a bright plate. Second one is going to be an echo. And third is going to be a chorus. Next up, we're going to have a battery of de-essers. We're going to need six de-essers for our vocals and another four for our MC microphones. Each de-esser can be used as a pair, so this covers two channels. So that covers vocal one and two. This will cover vocal three and four. This will cover vocal five and six. This will cover MC one and two, and this will cover MC three and four. From here, we don't need any of these other ones, so we will just put them as an empty rack. Next up, we can get to assigning these. So we'll leave these as inserts to a mono, and we're just gonna type in, just gonna scroll to channel 31 and 32 apply. And now we look, the insert is on both of those. And we will continue to just do the same for the following de-essers. Next up, we're going to add an insert of Dyna EQ onto all of our main vocals. And I'm also going to add one to our main left and right. Last thing to check would be the sends into our subwoofer. With this, it's only an on-off. There isn't an actual level aside from just the main fader level. So what we're gonna do is just go through and only leave on what we do want to go to the subwoofer. So all of our drums, of course, should be able to go to subwoofer. They should, don't really need the keys or the guitars to go through. We'll leave the tracks going through. Having the horns or the vocal line go through the subwoofer sounds like a great recipe for feedback. And we will leave on our line in and playback music and USB stick music. From here, this scene is ready to rock. We'll just go over the main channel strips, drums with octave percussion and the click track, band plus the backing tracks, horn line and vocals, kind of some of our utility stuff, plus our MCs, so the MD and Ambience Talkback Mic, and also our aux inputs and our monitor buses, our matrix for broadcasts, and our effects returns. A is our main layer where we have our where we have our DCAs, a crush group for our drums, and a crush group for our vocals, plus our main mixes. During the show, we will basically never have to leave our main layer because we have the DCA spillovers assigned on the sides. And we also have our aux mixes on hotkeys on the side as well. A lot of people would go a lot heavier on the grouping. I like grouping, it's just a lot of people just use them for submasters, and we have DCAs for that. I do think having crush groups is pretty good. If you're having, say, a drum solo or a really heavily vocal line driven part, having those crush groups is pretty handy. 
And again, the idea behind this scene be being built the way it is, is that, you know, during soundtrack, you'll be in between the layers, leveling things and processing things. But during the show, you can basically just stick on layer A and use DCA spillover when necessary. This would be really good for, for churches or volunteer based situations because they don't have to go layer diving to find channels. They just click the DCA that corresponds to what they're trying to find. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions or comments, maybe I missed something. Let me know. But anyway, thanks for watching.